We're in Denix talking to Tommy Nicolosi, who is a third generation Italian butcher and here in Philadelphia. His grandfather had a butcher shop in South Philadelphia and as a young boy he learned the art of um, cooking beef and pork and butchering and he's going to help us today learn a lot about how we can not be afraid, not be afraid of that big piece of roast pork or roast beef. So we're going to go talk to Tom and, and, and see what we can learn today. and. And maybe I'll I'll get some free lunch out of it. I've watched you cut meat many mornings, and the question that I always have when I'm watching you cut a piece of beef or pork when you're trimming away the fat is go on. I see you cut the piece of meat, and I see a pile of fat off to the side. Right. And then I still see fat on the piece of meat, so I'm like, well, if that was bad fat. That's good fat. How much fat is enough fat? Too uh, much fat. In the case of pork. The breeding and the feeding of uh, pigs is different today. Years and years ago, the things were loaded with fat. I mean, I think it was a tastier product. So uh, there was far more trimming. Uh, now I actually have to save some of the fat to add back, to add back in because uh, the pork is much leaner today. And after the cooking, any fat that rises to the surface, I can get rid of. So as you cook way. a piece of meat, the fat rises and makes its way to the top of the meat. That, yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. And then. I discard anything I want and right. keep whatever I want. Basically, we don't really understand that much as the everyday consumer about where our meat comes from. What part of the pig, what, um, we're looking at pork pole right now? Yeah, this, um, well, this came from briskets. Our brisket is, um, um, is, is braised as, a, as opposed to uh, being cured in a brine. Basically, a braise is cooked in a liquid about halfway up, not boiling. The liquid we use is um, a little wine, and then the stock that comes from our roast beef goes into our brisket, which then makes it like a double strength, more intense flavor. And likewise, from our roast pork, the stock that makes up the liquid, other than a little bit of wine, so the pulled pork is the uh, uh, stock from our roast pork. So then you're cooking our pork shoulders in there, and you're getting double intensity. So if I'm gonna take a piece of meat and cook it low and slow, I think the expression that I've heard. Yeah. What are the rules that I have to follow so I don't have shoe leather? Well, the rules would be um, fundamental rules. For example, uh, you get a nice brown on your meat, sear it, brown it, and, um, and if you're gonna braise it, you would want uh, a braising liquid and then, um, after all that's done, you would uh, cover it tightly and from a, a high temperature oven, you would put it into a, a low temperature. And there it would remain until it hit um, just about a couple hundred degrees internal temperature. And they, and they melt in your mouth. If when these briskets are done and I, and I cut off a quarter inch slice or a third inch slice, if you require a knife to cut it, that, that brisket's not done. It's not done. What am I looking at? Uh, this is the roast beef. Uh, this was uh, seasoned yesterday morning, and then we kind of put it to sleep overnight. To sleep? Uh, yeah, I'll just let the seasonings kind of develop with the uh, meat flavors. I see that there's little chunks of like what look like fat in there. When we trim the meat up bef before we tie and season it, all the all the tough pieces. Things I don't really want, want the, the customer to get in his sandwich, we pull off of there. So rather than throw it out, you put it at the bottom of the bottom of the pan. It just it's free. It was there. I mean, it, it could have hit the garbage can. Not good to eat, but good for flavor. Is there any other chemistry involved with what the seasonings do to the meat? Does it tenderize it anymore? No, or not really. N n no, it's no. strictly flavor. When you have, when you have a roast this thick. You know, no matter, you're, you're not getting to the middle of that roast with, <laughs> with, with anything but a uh, right. sharp knife. So right. uh, it's, it's there for a flavor enhancement. And the uh, seasoning is a um, thing I like to do in this manner. We season the meat the night before, let it, let it rest all night. And then partway through the cooking process, we uh, re-season again. So you, 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 you split it up. So. Do you sense that there's a certain amount of um, fear on the part of people and to try cooking things like roasts and uh, pigs and... Yeah, I think people should cook. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, 
aside from eating well, you know, it's cultural. I think it, uh, it binds families together. You know, in our house, we cooked every night. Uh, not necessarily fancy, but we cooked every night. And um, TV wasn't uh, allowed to be on. And my kids grew up uh, sitting at the dinner table. Together. Together, sitting at the dinner table and conversing. So let me ask you a question while we're looking at this beautifully tied and seasoned meat. You, you make the best sandwiches in the city, I believe. Well, and thank you. The sandwiches are best. very simple. There's bread, it's good bread. That's important, obviously, the bread be great quality. And meat with cheese, without cheese. Or, but basically, it's Pepper's an incredibly tasty sandwich. So I'm sure I know that people have come up to you and said, what's the secret? Why does this meat taste so good? Uh, Is there a I, secret? I think, uh, I think people say that to me like two or three times a week. I get that. And um, I always tell them the same thing. Sometimes I have a feeling I think I'm ducking their question and holding something back, but I'm not. Um, there is no secret. It's just fundamentals. You know, I would like to, uh, I would like to be able to take credit for cooking with uh, wine and garlic and rosemary and olive oil. <laughs> but, it, but it's really just fundamentals, things, things that have been laid down for centuries and centuries. So um, uh, secrets are highly o overrated. I don't believe too much in secrets. Uh, I do believe in fundamentals and um, knowing what you're doing. So uh, it it's not secrets.